Herschel Electronics has been in business for more than 25 years, specializing solely in security. This is the verification station. The model number begins with the letters RUU because the unit answers that question, RUU. This is the general purpose version. The verification station also comes in a PIV TWIC card version and also a CAC version, which I'll cover in a minute. This is one of the few, if not the only, general purpose high security biometric edge reader on the market. One of the reasons it is a high security device is it offers three-factor authentication of someone's identity. It checks a card, something you have, a pin code, something you know, and a finger, biometric, something you are. Combined, these three factors provide what is termed strong authentication of identity. And here's an example of that three-factor authentication. I present the card. The verification start, uh, prompts for my pin code. I press start. You notice the keypad has viewing restrictors that prevent people from standing to the side from seeing the code. The keypad also scrambles or changes the location of the digits for each use. This prevents onlookers from stealing the code by watching a finger pattern or by looking at wear marks. This keypad is a Hearst scramble pad, and the verification station is the only biometric device in the world with an integrated scramble pad to ensure privacy and prevent stolen codes. Now, if I enter the valid code, it then ma it uh, prompts for my finger, then matches my fingerprint to that stored access granted to that stored, uh, the fingerprint that's stored either on the card, the device, or on the network. And it then confirms the identity authentication if everything matches. So this three-factor authentication assures the person is who, they, who the badge says they are. Now the verification station also has a fourth option, fourth authentication factor, a check of the validity of the card's PKI certificate, which I'll discuss in more detail in a moment. Identity verification access control as a door reader and as a biometric encoder to capture fingerprints, encode the smart card, and manage the users and biometric devices. The same unit can perform all three functions. For identity verification, for example, you can use the verification station at card handover to ensure the person you're handing the card to is the same person that enrolled earlier. Using it as a guard checkpoint would be another example of straightforward but strong identity verification. The verification station can also be used as a door reader the verification station has a relay output, so the identity, after the identity has been verified, the verification station could be configured to send a signal to the door to unlock directly. Another uh, door reader scenario is once the person's identi identification has been verified, the verification station passes the verified identity onto the access control system and lets the access control system make the decision about whether to let that particular person enter that particular door at that specific time. The verification station includes a Wigand output, so it can be connected to just about any brand of access control system on the market. And for the highest level of security, the verification station should be connected to a Hirsch Velocity access control system, which uses a non-Wigand encoded data protocol for communication between the door and the access control system. You can choose to use either a MyFair or DesFire smart cards, which are about the same price as traditional 125 kilohertz prox cards and you can also choose between contactless or a contacted version of the card because the verification station has both smart card readers contact and contactless or you can use it cardless such as fingerprint only or fingerprint plus pin actually there are 12 different operational modes to choose from if you take a look at the administration software here if I go up here to select from the 12 modes I go to device management access control Select the device that I want, if I have multiple on the network, click a, two more uh, clicks, and I've got this screen, which allows me to choose from my 12 modes. You see that changing the mode only takes seconds, and then these 12 modes provide great versatility because the verification station can be set up how the administrator wants, and the modes can be changed as the situation or the environment changes. Now this same unit can be used for enrollment to capture the fingerprints, for encoding to write the fingerprint template to the process or on the smart card, and for management of the users and the biometric devices. The software to do the enrollment, the encoding, and the management comes with the unit. Let's take a look at the encoding and enrollment. To enroll a new user from the administration software, I simply choose user management, enrollee management, add, and her first name, Last, some optional information, 
and a PIN number. Go next, it asks me for a picture. I can include one if I want to. And here's where I choose the fingers. We recommend enrolling two fingers. I'm gonna start with my um, right index finger. If you pan over to the verification station here, you see it's asked me for a finger. It takes two images of the fingerprint. Place finger again. And fingerprint uh, is captured. I'm going to go ahead and when that comes up, select my second index finger. On the other hand, just in case someone has a bandaged hand or they're carrying something and they want an alternative. And I'll go with my left index finger on the unit here. And that is enrolled. The fingerprint templates are now in the software. I and mean, as the administrator, I can choose to store those fingerprint templates on the server, or I can push the templates out to the verification station unit themselves, which allow me to use the verification station without being connected to the network or use it in a cardless mode. Or I can store the fingerprint template in the card. To encode the fingerprint template to the card, you click Next, Finish, and then go up to card management and say write card setting, choose the user and issue card. I'm going to include both fingerprints on my card, give myself an expiration of 2020 and go ahead and click write. Now it says place card please and it's going to identify the card. It's going to ask me whether or not I want to write that data to the card and says do you want to write to the card? Yes I do. Now it says place card please and I need to hold it there for four or five seconds so it writes to the card. That was actually quicker. And that data was pushed to the card and I have completed it. Now I can use this card, enter my PIN, prompts for the finger, and access granted. Very simple process for enrollment, encoding, and management of the devices. Now I have my fingerprint and code on this card, and this idea of traveling around carrying your fingerprint on your card is fairly new. It offers a lot of power. You can now go anywhere there's a verification station and prove through strong three-factor authentication that you are who the badge claims. And I don't need to be pre-enrolled in that verification station because I'm carrying my matching fingerprint and pin with me. So say I traveled to a remote site, I would present my badge and say, see, it's me. The other person would say, yes, I see you have what looks to be an official badge, and it is your photo, but let's present the card to the verification station and see, are you you? Now the PIV or personal identity verification version of the verification station for federal government sites, which also reads TWIC cards for seaports, follows the standards mandated by HSPD 12's FIPS 201. The verification station can communicate with a variety of third party identity management systems and card management systems to fit a specific agency's needs. The PIV verification station operates similarly to that shown earlier, but the, in following the standards mandated by FIPS 201, the PIV verification station requires a PIN code, fingerprint, and a contact smart card be used. The verification station will read the PIV or TWIC cards, fast scan, and expiration date from the CHUA container. If the card, code, and fingerprint match, and if the unit is networked to the required infrastructure, the verification station can also validate the public key infrastructure, or PKI certificate, on the card by contacting a certificate authority or an online credential status provider, OCSP, and checking the credential revocation list, CRL. And as a result, most commonly certificate valid or certificate revoked, that result is returned to the verification station for appropriate action. Verification Station is also available in a version that reads the Department of Defense's Common Access Card, or CAC, and it operates in a similar way to that shown earlier. So with the various options it offers, the 12 modes of operation, the three different power choices including power over Ethernet or PoE, the multiple communication ports, the uploadable firmware, etc., the Verification Station is extremely versatile. It allows the user to meet the current and future needs and it's manufactured by a company people can trust, Hearst Electronics.